All right. Good evening, Hi. Mr. Haikal. How are you? I'm good. I'm fine. Just call me Haikal. You don't have to call me Mr. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hi Kal. For those of you who are unfamiliar with this dude, he goes by the name at Wastana Hi Kal. And here's a fun yeah. fact for all of you: it's not his real name. <laughs> it's not his real name. It is this creative approach that artists have. And uh, do you mind explaining to them why you chose the name Wastana Hi Kal as your Instagram? Okay, so Wastana means his name in Sundanese language. So his name is Haikal, like, because I have, like, short name, like, only Haikal, and people keep asking me, what Haikal? Like, what's your share name, or what's your family name? Like, my name is Haikal, mm -hmm. so the name is Haikal, and then I, I finally ended up with Wastana Haikal, yeah? You know, I just make, mm -hmm. make something creative from jokes. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> so guys, uh, our followers, our audiences out there, uh, you know that Haikal takes his art seriously. He's very creative and he created his own name and there's a meaning behind it. There's a significance to it. All right. So um, before we start, Stella is going to go first because she's too enthusiastic to interview <laughs> because she found you. You're her pick. She has been talking about you since we started this campaign for like eight weeks ago. So she's been waiting quite some time for this. So Stella, you're up. <laughs> okay, so at first, I'm going to admit that I really impressed. When I checked on your Instagram account, I was like blown away because I never seen any Insta uh, Indonesian artist before having that such great uh, art and posted. Oh, thank you. Um, yes. <laughs> I'm pretty, actually pretty uh, nervous. I talked to Eugene just now. You are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I have my first question here. Can I know where do you get your style inspiration when it comes to creating your drawings or your art? Okay, so if we, uh, maybe I will separate two, two things like style, mm -hmm. style and voice. Mm -hmm. With style, means something visually and voice means something us uh, you know it's more it's you're more trying about to what like, you're trying to communicate with the soul. art yeah it's, okay. it's more like soul the, the soul uh, inside the um the art itself yeah so for for the style is actually i'm actually inspired by a lot of things but mostly indonesian culture such as batik Mm -hmm. and um, another traditional pattern. I, I really inspired by how they generically, um, you know, um, feeling the space each other. I really interested by that. So most of my illustration that have the, pat the pattern mostly almost look like batik. And I, you know, I took, some of the some of the um, characteristic of the body of the batik pattern to my style, and for um, for the the voice the voice itself the soul of my illustration or or the soul of my works, I'm mostly inspired by my personal experience, by my personal experience, by everything around me because I believe that we can get ideas and we can get inspiration from any minor school thing like for example we can get an idea from a trash we can get idea from i don't know like bacteria yeah or everything you know like there's a lot of things out there and there's a lot of things around us that i try to you know and also you know also being also teach me how to be grateful as a human because I can see anything as a good special thing. Yeah. So um, I can, you know, I can make approach, like everything can be approached as from my art perspective. And maybe that's what my soul of art, like, I don't know, like people say that that is really genuine. And some of people said that I have, this different um, vibration and different, you know, 
um, frequency yeah. that every time, every time I tell my story, every time I make art. But you know, sometimes it, it's it it took a while for me to understand what they get because, right. you no, know, from myself, like I I'm not really intended to to do that, you know, like but people mm. uh, somehow get something special yeah so so along so along the way i try to emulate i try to you know like um observe i try to understand what is i'm capable of in um you know telling the story telling the the meaning the message so my my so after i don't know like maybe 10 years or or more like I finally know that what makes my art my art is really my personal experience and how I see the world like that I think that means naturally you always have this creative interpretation to everything yeah right? yeah and yeah. that's a talent that's a talent to artists <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that was so yeah, after hearing you uh, talking about your style inspiration and everything, I kind of agree that uh, you make like all your viewers seeing the things in a good perspective way. As for now, Indonesian culture is exposed through all the yeah. creative world. It's even better for now. So like all the younger people, adolescents, can even uh, understand and appreciate more to Indonesian culture, which is a very good uh, yeah. case. So... Moving on to the second question, I would like to ask, uh, how did you get started into this field of work, considering that now you are kind of pretty big in this creative industry? <laughs> Saying pretty big is an understatement in my opinion. So, <laughs> Amen. Okay, so first of all, um, my mom said that I started drawing at three. Okay. I don't know. I know the truth, but you know, my, my mom always said that. And Mom's after right. that, <laughs> yeah. And after that, I keep, you know, like I keep drawing, I keep creating things, like it's daily basis. You know, like I, I don't really, I don't really see that as a hobby. And my parents also didn't push me to do that. Like it just came naturally. Like I see pencil, I see paper, and then I want to draw. Like yeah, you know, it just came in. It just came out that way. Mm -hmm. And after that, so I finally realized that, okay, I like this. And then uh, slowly my parents support me. They provide me with more decent um, tools, you know, drawing tools and mm -hmm. more decent um, papers and everything. And then, mm -hmm. and they also um, enrolled me to extracurricular, um, drawing extracurricular in school, in mm -hmm. elementary school. Yeah. And then, so I started, maybe, maybe I can say that that is where I started a formal form of, um, uh, of drawing career. Yeah. I don't know. And, mm -hmm. um, and then after that, after elementary school and then middle school, high school, I keep drawing. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I dare to say that I drawing like, the entire life like because as long as i remember like i draw every day like there's no one day that i'm not drawing you know even even just like for a tiny doodle or you know just only or or only maybe just thinking about it you know like yeah uh, like i don't know like i feel like maybe you know maybe it's not exaggerating but you know it's in my dna like it's my oxygen yeah, it's yeah. my you know, it's your instinct it's my, basically yeah it's my instinct it's my yeah. virtue it's my you know like it's 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 part of my life like yeah if i have no chance or maybe i don't want to say this but if i not be able to draw again i will be completely lost a half of myself like because uh you know drawing is already like the highlight yeah. of my life and then like that is my life so, mm -hmm. yes, so yeah and definitely. then after that and then after in high school i started my first commission like if for example like my friends my father's friend um having a birthday or 
their um, girlfriend having a birthday. Right. They, okay. Yeah. They they always order like they they purchase my drawings, my caricature, and then that is you know I can say that is the first um the first stone of my career mm-hmm. at, uh, when I was when I was in um, high school and then after in high school I finally realized that. Um, I really want to go to to the art school. Like, actually, I and and then when I was when I was a kid, like when I was in kindergarten, I already I already said to my mom that I want to be an artist when I was or, or when I when I when I grow up. Like, mm-hmm. it's already um, planted in my mind that I have to go to art school. And then finally, when I when I when I was in high school, I understand how. Uh, which school is good, and then um, how to how to be able to enroll, and then I finally chose um, Bandung Institute of Technology yeah. in Bandung, and then I took um, design and art faculty, and after that, um, my natural, you know, like drawing, illustrating, and everything, it's already my natural habitat, you know, like mm-hmm. it's already my nature, and then yeah. finally, when I when I when I enrolled in that school, I finally, um, you know, realized and then acknowledged um, about the profession, about how far the the art can, you know, can improve yeah. the world, can improve the society, or maybe, you know, just to approach ourselves as an artist. Mm-hmm. And then, and when, and finally, when I when I enrolled in in the faculty, I finally, you know we can share the same thought we can share the yeah. same hobby with with my you know with my with my colleagues mm-hmm. and that's the best part because we can also learn from the alumni we can also learn from the senior mm-hmm. uh, about uh, how the industry works and everything and then finally when i i, I already freelancing when i was in um when i was in college because mm-hmm. you know we need money like we, we need we need like i need more i need more money to having fun you know like yeah I, definitely i yeah, get you i, I, I get always, you like, i can't i can't always depending on my you know on my um parents and also my parents yeah. is not really like you know like 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 wealthy parents so i mm-hmm. i need to you know i need to think harder and think um how to you know how to be how to be a youth you know like yeah yeah like definitely having fun like buying new clothes and everything mm-hmm. and then so i started my freelancing when i was in college yeah. and then after that after that i know some of my friends out of my faculty like i know the engineer student i know the mm-hmm. science student yeah. and then i know um, i know my seniors i know my alumni so mm-hmm. after graduated somehow i already have the link you know like yeah the link network to, yeah. yeah the network the link to to me to do the freelancing mm-hmm. so in the middle of you know graduation situation i i i had a project like a freelance project so i'm i wasn't really think about um apply to a design studio or uh an, an advertising agency because i already have um project that i have to finish yeah, so after yeah, yeah at, and after that project finish another project came and another kit project so it's it's layering and so yeah, yeah. until today i don't really have time to you know thinking about applying to to a, to a design studio mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. you know when i was when i was graduate in 2016 I so my freelance um, career started so until now so it's already like four almost five years of my freelance so mm-hmm. yeah after I graduate I I started to working with some you know start up and then um, as time goes by the clients getting bigger and yes. the audience get the audience getting wider and yeah. I feel more you know I feel <laughs> I, I feel I have, you know, like greater power came with greater responsibility. Yes, definitely. Then, oh, although, you know, like I don't really have, I don't really have like a responsibility to anyone. Like I'm not a superhero, <laughs> but you know, uh, since, since I have the chance to have 
my platform to you know to spread my my voice to spread mm. my you know my vision so i i took i took that advantage to yeah. you know to try to explore myself and then try to dare to explore anything that i never been explored before and yeah. and tell you know and tell my audience that uh, towards art if if you if you're facing the art like if you want to make art just make it like mm -hmm. just go ahead yeah just go ahead don't be afraid to start so yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's it <laughs> Yeah, I and I know that uh, you graduated from one of the best universities in Indonesia, the the uh, the Bandung Institute of Technology. Yeah. Lots of connections there, and basically with that freelance career you just started, uh, it it basically gave up it built up your career till now. You've reached uh, a different level of stardom in the uh, art community, especially as being a graphic designer, illustrator. And uh, I've heard, I've, I, I talked to a bunch of graphic designers, both who has made a name for, for themselves as well. And they speak very highly of you. So I was like, oh, damn, this guy, th th this guy is the man, you know, I'm so glad we got him. But uh, yeah, so I got to ask you because you're like one of the, uh, the biggest players in the market right now. So do you think enrolling into a graphic design or illustration course would be a substantial difference to independent learning? Um, maybe uh, because as long as I know right now, like no matter how your background, as long as you have vision and as long as you have hard work and trust to your process and believe in your, um, you know, vision, uh, even if you came from engineering student or science student or accountant or anything, yeah. you can be you can be an illustrator, and you don't really have to be able to draw like Picasso or you know like Da Vinci or mm -hmm. you know any any other great uh, great yeah. artist. You don't have to be like them, like because in art we're talking about our stuff actually like yeah if you definitely. trust your, if you trust yourself if you trust your art because art is part of yourself if mm -hmm. you don't if you don't um respect your art you don't respect yourself that's what i that's what i had in my mind until now because um there are so many people to be afraid to try like they always ask me like um, hi, Carl. I came from accountant, or I came from engineering student, and I want to try to be an illustrator. I want to try to be a designer. Like, uh, just try. Like, if you if you are if you make a bad artwork in your first trial, that is okay. I mean, like, first time, never good. Like, first time, always bad. And that is the matter of time. If you make thousands art, thousands bad artwork, it will elevate you to the, you know, to the good one. If you stop at nothing, like mm -hmm. don't don't re even try, you will always be in that point, and yeah. you won't be, you know, you won't be improve yourself. Mm -hmm. And then when I uh, and about the question, like the the formal, maybe like the formal institute, yeah, formal education. <laughs> It's it's somehow it's 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 it help you to you know to make your ecosystem earlier you know oh, okay. like you or you already know how this industry going mm -hmm. you already know the term you know the you know you know the playmaker mm -hmm. you know the um the 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 good names and everything yeah. you know it just to make your uh, you make your ecosystem earlier mm -hmm. and maybe you have the advantage because you you have the alumni in mm -hmm. another uh, in company so you you will be easily promoted mm, but right. that is not the only way to be success i mean like um, that is that is another way mm -hmm. and that and there's a lot of ways to be you know success yeah. in this uh, in this industry as long as Definitely. you you know hard work because hard work pays everything like i mean <laughs> yeah yeah um 
I, I have a lot of colleagues that are not from art student, like mm -hmm. some are from architecture, some are from accountant, some are from communication, some are from um, advertisement, and even some of, and even I have I have my idol. She came from um, industrial engineering, but Ooh. she she ended up became a fashion designer, yeah. shoe designer, interpreter, mm -hmm. writer. You know, like um, yeah. you can make you can be whoever you want yeah. as long as you believe yeah. of what you're doing and what you wanted because these days we we sometimes already give up mm. seeing seeing so many too many references yes. in front of our eyes yes. and too many references that seems people seems really fast to go there mm -hmm. and then we easily to give up mm. that is actually very you know the very bad side of this industry that's why if you want to be you know if you want to survive in this industry you don't always have to be like came from um the art background art school, yeah you don't have to came from art background as long as you hard work and believe in yourself you will get your market and you will yeah. get your audience yeah <laughs> as long as you pour your passion and hard work into yeah. it you invest in it it's definitely gonna pay off but at the same time yeah. Formal education it gives you a safe space to uh, a process yeah. of trial and error and allows you to be in this um, network of people of like-minded people that uh, mm. helps you grow even more. So that's a consideration yeah. for all the audiences watching out there. Yeah. Wow, that's um, thank you for that. But I also have another question related to that uh, to yeah. formal education or something like that. It's basically about opportunity. And uh, I realized that a lot of people that they, I know a couple of my friends who say that I would love to get into this, but I don't have the like uh, the right application, the right program, or even a strong mm -hmm. enough computer to, to work with that. So in your opinion, to what extent does your hardware define your skill set? Um... For me, uh, tools can be really helpful, especially when you get, when you already have, when you already become a professional and you become, you know, you already have jobs and everything. You need something that really effective and really, um, you know, can be helpful in terms of enhancing your, you know, enhancing your visual or maybe make the, make the, the process easier or make the process really um, only in one place or in, only in one gadget, that is really helpful. But if you, because I always, I always say to my audience, sometimes you need to give up like sometimes you need to give up to your situation yeah. because we are not born in the same type of family like mm -hmm. there's a wealthy family yeah. and you know some of not you know not not fortunate family like uh, maybe they they don't really have a budget to you know to buy all of those yeah. things yeah so i told them you sometimes you need to give up because mm -hmm. It just to make yourself clear, to make your mind clearer, to see what is your want to do instead mm -hmm. of what already peop what people already achieve, and then we kind of envious yeah. because envious is really toxic. Like it's mm -hmm. really intoxicating you as an artist. Mm -hmm. So I always say that. Like I started only with pencil and paper, mm -hmm. and then I, you know, and then I try some of color pencil and then I try uh, crayons and then I try um, watercolor like I use anything I have back then like I don't really um, bother about how you know how um, 
how good the the tools that I should have or how um how um fancy the tools that I should have to to get to some you know to get to our standard i because um if you are concentrate about what you're doing rather than um the tools you can get a unique um style you know like for example maybe uh one family they don't really have money they already have maybe they they you know in the middle of forest or everything they all they only have mud or they only have leaf yeah. they only have nature around them and if they embrace their situation mm -hmm. no uh, they can make art from nature and maybe a people from city a people from a big town don't have vision like that you know yeah, they don't have the access or, or yeah. opportunity to it yeah. yeah because that's why um tools can be divine mm -hmm. can be enhance your style but if you don't have an opportunity and you don't have yet budget to buy all of, all of those tools be concentrate like because being an artist is not only exercising your tools your yeah. your skills like your heart skill you also have to connect to yourself like you need to you need to talking to yourself yeah. more you need to understand what yourself want mm -hmm. you need to understand um how your art work how your art communicate with you, with yourself or with your other people you know we can make um we can make that a chance you know in, instead of we whining or we you know like um looking for uh, a reason to to not to to not to start we mm -hmm. we can start with you know minimal tools minimal things but uh, we can be more intimate with with yeah. ourselves you know because when we intimate with ourselves when we know what we want when we understand our art mm -hmm. any tools if we use any tools the art will recognizable as yeah. our art mm -hmm. so from my personal um perspective i don't want to I don't want to, you know, limit myself mm -hmm. uh, to tools, you know, yes, like definitely. I don't want to, I don't want to, for example, maybe like, maybe if my iPad, if my iPad get lost or my laptop get lost, yeah, yeah. I don't want that to be like uh, something that stopped me for me. Yeah, it shouldn't be a I, hindrance. It shouldn't yeah, be a and, problem. And, and, and maybe I feel like, you know, like, oh my God, I lost myself. No, yourself is there. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, like, so tools only, only enhance and maybe can shape your artwork. Uh, uh, tools also can shape your style. Yeah. Because, you know, from the brushes they have, mm -hmm. from the effect they have, but still that, that is really fabricated. You know, if mm -hmm. we only focus on that, we our work will be same like others people yeah. other people that have the same tools you know mm -hmm. so yeah we the, the focus is only you know we we still always be um focused on ourselves rather than uh -huh. the tools so basically everything starts with you if you be yeah. more conscious about uh your environment what's around you and you use it to your advantage you can translate it into art and yeah. Basically, you appreciate what you have and you work with what you got and that's enough. Yeah. 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 That's something that most artists nowadays um, tend to forget and it's good to have you to refresh their mind regarding the matter. Yeah. So thank you for that lovely answer, uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Aikal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, moving on to, your, uh, to the next question. It's a bit, well... Okay, obviously, we're all curious about what you have to say for this. And because everyone gives different answers regarding this. So what is your opinion regarding the current art scene in Indonesia? Um, it's actually, I feel like the art industry already improved. 
-hmm. because even when I was graduate, there's still not so many brands. Mm. There's still not so many product that needs us. You know, like most of my senior after graduate, they straight to the studio. They straight to the you know um, advertising agencies. Yeah. They straight to the in-house company and everything. Like mm -hmm. they like I I don't re I don't really remember that I we have the role model a freelance role model, you know, mm -hmm. from our alumni. Mm -hmm. So, so nowadays it, it, you know, it became more, more dynamic, you know, like you don't like even, even, the, even the college student uh, today, like if they already have a job, you know, like yeah. as a freelancer, as a, you know, as a, as a, as an influencer, slash illustrator you know like mm -hmm. it, it's really moving uh faster you know today and i really i i, I really you know i'm really happy like mm -hmm. at least they they don't really have to start um after graduate you know because um when when you when you when you graduate the pressure will be you know will be harder for you to get a job so mm -hmm. sometimes you can forget your dreams for a while so if you start, so if you start from your college, it will be easier. It will be easier for you to make a mistake. It will be faster for you to make a mistake. Mm -hmm. So, but for the industry as a professional, it's still um, it, it improves. But the workflow and the work situation and the and the working ecosystem is still not really subtle. Like there's a, there's still a lot of studios and agencies that overwork, and even you know like um, the the salary is not like you know we can say that the salary is not worth it. Then okay. rather than the time they spend in the office, uh -huh. um, because I've been I've been I've been working with agencies and design studios, they really have a like tight schedule, you know, like oh, yeah. the, the, their schedule is always tight and then they're really working every day. Like, I mean, even yeah. in the weekend, even in the weekend and every day is the deadline, you know, like- mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you, you always have a deadline to catch. Yeah, you, make, you make deadline today and then yesterday is another deadline. I mean like, yeah. uh, I don't know, maybe because I never been in a studio before. Yeah, I never been in the company before, so it it sometimes sometimes it I still um I still stoked you know like oh, okay like um I I need to I need to follow their pace you know mm -hmm. like yeah. and I'm not their I'm not their employer you know I, I'm not their, their employee you know like so mm -hmm. sometimes I feel like oh, do I really have to do this like. Uh, chill like i'm not one of your guys like um i'm an you know like i'm 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 an outsource you know like yeah yeah I, you're a freelancer you know, i really need i really need to you know to be uh, as hard as they did like yeah th that is not that's not a you know that's um i don't want to say that that's okay but you know because i already know this is true you know the the ecosystem is still not good in yeah, any yeah. you know in in any studio so i try to i try to keep up and i try to you know just just to just to exercise for me like mm -hmm, to, mm -hmm. to follow the to follow the the fast pace because you know to, just just to make just to improve my my talent in communication yeah, yeah. my talent, you know just i i try to squeeze the lemon i you know i, I try mm -hmm. to squeeze the lemon out of it yes and and yeah, maybe that that is the 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 the, the, hi, the most highlighted thing in design industry is mm -hmm. the overwork, mm -hmm. the overwork, yeah, the overwork, and um, because I don't know, like yeah, the overwork is the more highlighted, yeah. the, the the most highlighted uh, things in the in this industry in mm -hmm. Indonesia. Yeah. So all you art studios, art uh, out there, advertising agencies, and anyone who basically hires uh, graphic designers, y'all should really listen and take note. 
They aren't horses, man. Don't force them to work as hard as well. They're doing the best they can. So appreciate them at least. Come on. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, thank you so much, uh, Hi Kong, for all these great answers. Uh, and just before we go, I know we finished like the uh, the set list questions, but I have um, a question, uh, a personal question for you. Is it okay if I ask? Okay, it's okay. So, it's okay. so basically, uh, earlier uh, today, I was looking through your Instagram profiles, right? And one of the uh, more recent pictures you took. Um, were, was you wearing these blue and pink Chuck Taylors uh, from Converse? Do you do you know that? Uh, yeah. yeah. And yeah, one yeah. of the questions, I, one of the questions was, where did she get that shoe? And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, you know what? You I'm interested. <laughs> yeah, I, I got it. I I knew I knew those shoes from my friend when I mm. when I was when when we were when we were hanging out. In Jakarta, oh, my friend, okay. you know, my friends, my friend pointed that shoe. Like, he really wanted that shoe. Okay. And then I found, like, oh, you have a good eyes. Like, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I didn't even notice. You know, I, I'm a fan of a, I, I'm a fan of hot pink, but okay. I didn't notice. I, I, I didn't notice that shoe. Mm-hmm. And then my friend noticed. And then, I don't know, like, couple, couple of days or a couple <laughs> of weeks, I, I, I got mine. So I, I bought it. And when I, when I got back. To Bandung, I bought it in Bandung. So, and I and I really, I'm really happy. I'm really glad to they still have that because that is like one of the the limited edition mm-hmm. Taylor. Mm-hmm. So when I got one, I really, you know, I'm really happy. Yeah, those look really good, especially on huh. you. So I just gotta point <laughs> that out. <laughs> Okay, um, so basically, uh, Stella, do you have any personal questions? Because I know you're a fan, so... Um... <laughs> no, I'm gonna admire you from the far, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, so basically, thank you for this interview. Just before we go, okay. or we end this session, uh, do you have any parting words that you'd like to say to our audience and basically out there watching? Mm, maybe just... Don't focus on the result. Focus on the process. Mm. Focus. Try listen to yourself more, yeah. rather than people's achievement. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes what people get, it's not ours. So we need to find our own gift. You know what I mean. <laughs> And then um, we we need to trust process. We need to trust exercise mm-hmm. because more exercise you will get more you know skills and everything yeah because everything everything takes time like it's not all it's not only art it's everything so when it comes to art you need to be patient but you you know you you still also make a progressive um, result but don't push too hard yeah. until just and try to keep yourself and your art in the same situation like okay. in the tranquil situation because mm-hmm. once your ambition to- intoxicating your art your art will be dimmed and you will you know you will lost a part of yourself through that intoxicating habit so you need to respect your art yeah rather than focusing on people's achievement yeah mm-hmm. that's it <laughs> okay, thank you so much for this interview. This has been very insightful, very inspirational to all our followers and basically everyone watching uh, could really benefit from this, whether you come from an art background or not. Thank you so much for this wisdom. Thank you so much for your for your uh, for this opportunity, basically. Yeah. And also <laughs> I'm glad we got to do this. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> It is our honor. Okay.